Although Makata does still feel very, very tense, but Kimmy's feeling a little flirty. But okay, well, Kimmy's kissing him now. Yeah, become best friends. I think that's so, so cute. Oh, oh my God, that's so cute. Okay, yay. Rainbows, and welcome back to another episode of the Royal Family. We have a very fun episode planned today. So right now we are at the Willow Creek Palace. We are about to go see Prince Cornelius. So we'll be focusing on him for a little bit. We're also going to go see Ariana and Thomas and we're gonna see Makai and Jessica. And then we're going to have a big luau for the teens and the kids at the Sulani Royal Palace. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you're excited for this episode, make sure you hit that like button. So right now, as I mentioned, we are at the Willow Creek Palace. We are here because Prince Cornelius has decided that he is ready to come out to his mother. So before this, I'll give you guys just a little bit of insight. So before this, he had contacted his aunt, Lady Marjorie, which is Corinne's sister, and he had lunch with her. And basically he just asked her experience, what it was like for her to come out to her family and basically how his mom had taken that. And she told him that it was hard for her. And she was also really nervous about it. But Corinne, her sister and Cornelius's mother was one of the first people that she had told and Corinne took it really well and she was really supportive. So she asked if he wanted her to be there when he does tell her and Cornelius said yes. So she's here. This is Marjorie. She actually lives in Sulani now. She's married to Leah, which is actually Leilana's cousin. And then they have a son named Zachary. But yeah, so they're in the sitting room. He wanted to tell his mother first. So we're going to see how this goes. I have a mod. It's called the coming out mod. So I will link that in the description below if you wanted to download that for yourself. But we have this little option here. So for those of you who don't know, Cornelius is actually bi. So he's gonna come out as bi to his mother and we're gonna see how she takes this. Lady Marjorie, his aunt does already know. And I'm also glad that he was willing to reach out for help. I think that's a big step for Cornelius to actually ask for help. I think that went well. I think she took it well. I don't know, mostly his aunt is talking. It says, came out, came out to someone and it feels so good. So yeah, but Cornelius is also telling his mother about Ellis. And I think that honestly does make Corinne happy because the family, as I've mentioned before, they love Ellis. They do. I think Corinne might have a kind of suspicion about it, like that their relationship might have been a little bit more than friends. I think Genevieve thinks that for sure, because Genevieve is very intuitive, so is Corinne. I don't think Juliet or Elena knows, honestly, especially Elena. I don't think she pays attention to that stuff at all. And I don't think King Louis knows either. All Corinne can express acceptance. Yes, I'm gonna have her do that because I do think that she's fine with it. And I do think that Cornelius too, because I've seen some people in the comments, they said like, oh, Cornelius does doesn't even want to be king and all that stuff, which isn't actually true. I can see how you guys would think that though. But Cornelius, I think once he realized his sexuality, I think he just didn't know if he would be allowed to be king. I don't think he knew what would happen if he were to have a child, if they would be heir. He didn't know if his parents would accept him, like all this stuff. So I think he was very reluctant to learn what he needed to to become king because he just didn't know if there would be any point in it because he didn't know if he would even be king anyway. So I think. I think that's why he's been so rebellious and so against it because he just didn't know for sure. I mean, which makes sense. Like he was just scared and that's why he was going through this really big rebellious phase. I think in general, he is mostly a rebel. Like he doesn't like being told what to do exactly, but that doesn't mean he doesn't want to be king. He does love his kingdom. He's just been kind of angsty or like really angsty. So I think he's also expressing this to his mother. And I honestly think Corinne's a little bit relieved because they've been so worried about Cornelius and now they have have a reason and they know why or Corinne knows why anyway. So I think she's telling Cornelius that he needs to tell his father this. And I do think Cornelius still might be a little bit scared. He might be a little anxious to tell his father, but I do think Corinne is also offering to be there when Cornelius tells his father. But I think Cornelius is like, no, you know, I should, I'll tell him myself, like it's fine. But yeah, I mean, he's told his mother now, which is a big step. And I think he's doing this. Like I think Ellis knows that he was doing this and him and Ellis can be public about their relationship after his father knows too. So it's a big step for them. It's a big step for Corn Farm and I'm really excited for them. He's also got to tell his sisters, but I think he wants to first tell his parents before he tells his sisters. But yeah, it's it's a process for them, but it's happening and I'm excited for them. I'm excited for Cornelius. I'm excited for Ellis. Oh, and just an update on Genevieve too, because a lot of people do ask about her. Genevieve, 
even, I mean, she's even holding her homework right now. She's really into her studies. Something she might want to do is travel the world. I think she's become very interested in that, maybe being like a diplomat or something like that. So I just wanted to mention that because people were wondering. She doesn't have any romantic interests at the moment. Oh, also um, King Louis, you can't go in there, but they'll be out in just a second. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that about Genevieve. Julia and Elena are great. They're still really young, so we'll focus on them another time. But yeah, so that's everything we need to do here. Also, it is winter, so it is snowing. All right, so we are now in Brindleton Bay. So I actually moved Belle and Francisco because the lot they were on was way too small. It was like a 20 by 20 lot. I'll try to figure out something to do with that later, but I just liked it because it was near the palace. So I, that's what I wanted, but this is just a bigger lot. And I, I'm gonna change this house. I just didn't do that beforehand, um, but we're gonna change this. So they've moved, but they're still in Brindleton Bay. But we are here with Ariana and our parents, Belle and Francisco. It's a very Brindleton Bay-esque house. So, you know, just, just ignore. Oh gosh, that is a big calendar of a dog. Okay, yeah, just ignore. But Princess Belle has already told her husband, Francisco, about Sir Thomas Stratton and his age. So we saw, not last episode, but the episode before that, they had met him for the first time and they really liked him. But Belle knew that she had to tell Francisco that he was a little bit older. So she did tell him. Now, there is a pretty big age difference between Belle and Francisco as well. And actually, Belle is the older one. She's older by like somewhere between like five to seven years, something like that. So when Francisco found out, he was a little bit concerned only because Ariana is not quite 18 yet. However, she'll be 18 in like six months or something along those lines. So I think they're just telling Ariana that they do like Thomas. However, they would prefer them to have adult supervision when they hang out just because they just feel more comfortable that way. So like at parties and stuff is fine. If he wants to come over, that's fine. And they're hanging out in the living room. That's okay. And like with Thomas and Ariana, Thomas didn't know how old she was when they first met and then they hit it off and then he found out how old she was. And I think that was a little bit concerning for Thomas too. But Ariana is really mature for her age and I think he realized that, which is why he ended up staying with her and why he was okay with the relationship. But Ariana really does care what her parents think and Thomas knows that too, which is why he wanted to make a good impression on them. He's very nervous when he met them in the not last episode, but the one before that. But I think Ariana, I don't know, I, I think she's fine with the boundaries that they're setting. She's a pretty good kid. She doesn't rebel really. I mean, Thomas is probably the most rebellious she's been and she was nervous about it, but I think she's okay with it. And I think her parents will be okay with it too. Again, she'll be turning 18 fairly soon. 18 doesn't mean young adult in my game. 21 means young adult in my games, but yeah, you know. So I think Ariana's gonna be able to tell Thomas about this. I'm actually gonna have her call Thomas and tell what her parents said and that her dad knows now. I think Thomas is okay with this too. I mean, it's not like her parents are not letting them see each other at all. And this is only for a few months anyway. So yeah, we'll get to see them more in other episodes. I just wanted to see them real quick to give you guys an update on them. All right, so we are now in Sulani with Jessica and Makai. So in the last episode, if you remember, Makai's brother Kona had talked to him and asked him if adopting Jessica would be something that Makai would consider. And some time has passed since the last episode. I think Makai has thought about it. And I think he's decided that yes, that is something he would wanna do. I mean. Jessica's just been such a ray of light in his life. Like they have so much fun. Makai's always wanted a family and he knows that Jessica really loves Sulani too. So he's told Megan and Kellen this. He's asked if he can take Jessica out for the day, take her to the beach. Basically they'll be spending the day together. And then he's gonna ask her if she would want them to be a family and if she would wanna live in Sulani with him. But they're building a sand castle right now, which is just so cute. As soon as they're done, I'm going to have Makai cloud gaze with her. He can talk to her while they're cloud gazing, which is adorable. I honestly love them so much. And I think Jessica too, she loves Makai. She loves Sulani. It's winter now. So it's snowing in Windenburg and she hates it. And even to her, I feel like Selva Dorada was just always like very humid and she didn't love that part of Selva Dorada too much. But with Sulani, it's just not as humid. She loves the beach. It's gorgeous. So yeah. Okay. So they're cloud gazing, but I think Makai is telling her like, Hey, I have a question for you. Like these past few, I don't know. It's been like a few weeks. It's been like a month, I think since he's known her, but the past month that he's known her. He's telling her he just loves spending time with her. She's so much fun. She's a great kid and that he really cares about her. Like they've become such good friends. There's such a connection with them. And Makai's asking her if she wants them to be a family, if she wants to live with him in Suwani. But I think Jessica is saying, oh, and they're hugging too. I think Jessica is saying that like, yes, yeah, she would love that so much. This is where she would love to live. She loves Suwani. She loves Makai too. And I think she's honestly so happy that Makai has asked her. Like, I I think she had really wanted Makai to ask her. I think Makai is really the only person that she had wanted to be adopted by. So yeah, they're gonna make this official. 
official, I think that Makai should ask her. Oh, I think there's like a way to be, yeah, become best friends. I think that's so, so cute. So I will make sure then, and then, oh, oh my God, that's so cute. Okay, yay. But I will make sure the next episode that Jessica is all moved in here. I mean, there's gonna be a pretty big process. Like the adoption process is a lot. So Makai's gonna go through all that, make sure everything is done and taken care of. Make sure Jessica has nothing to worry about, but I'll make sure that he does that all by the next episode. And yeah, yay, okay, awesome. I'm so excited. I think that honestly, they're so cute. I also wanna say because people were saying, would Makai not wanna find love or like have a family if he adopts Jessica? Which that's not true. I mean, Jessica, I feel like has also asked him before, like, why don't you have a girlfriend? I feel like Jessica might be the type to even try to find Makai a girlfriend, but yay. Okay, we're gonna leave them here. They are honestly so adorable. Okay, so we are now at the Sulani Royal Palace. We are going to be having our luau in just a moment, but first we are here with Leilana and Dean and Makana. Leilana and Dean are trying, I realize there's a plant going through that wall, just ignore that. But Leilana and Dean are trying to talk to Makana because I've mentioned before that they're just kind of similar to what Cornelia's parents have been doing. Like they're just trying to help Makata do what he needs to do. They're trying to push him. And the difference between Makana and Cornelius is now we know the reason why Cornelius has been reluctant to learn what he needs to. But with Makana, he has the lazy trait and he also has the loner trait. He's also very forgetful. I feel like they'll give him a responsibility and he'll just forget to do it. And I think that they're telling him that he needs to pull his act together. Like he needs to get his stuff together and he's growing up like, and he needs to grow up and he needs to mature. He needs to be more responsible. So I think that's what Leilana and Dean are telling him. Makana's feeling a little bit tense. I think he wants to do this stuff. Like he wants to do what he's supposed to do and he, he hates how forgetful he is. And sometimes he just can't help it. And I think he kind of gets irritated with himself for forgetting things and for not being able to do what he's supposed to. I think Leilana and Dean, I mean, they're very encouraging parents. I think they're just trying to encourage him. Tell him like, you can do this. Like you don't have to be upset with yourself. Like we'll try to help you find ways to help you remember things and to help you with your responsibilities. But I think Makana honestly is just so irritated with himself. He can be hard on himself. He doesn't mean to, he just is. And Leilana and Dean, they don't wanna push him too much, but they're just having this serious talk with him, like sitting him down, telling him this is really important, will help you through things. But yeah, just so Makana knows that he like, he needs to do this, but he is feeling very tense right now too. Yeah, he's feeling very tense. So hopefully they'll find a way. We'll kind of see what happens. I'm pretty sure Makana just wants to go up to his room right now. So he's like, okay, is that it? And his parents are like, yeah, you can go. So he's gonna go chill up here until the party starts, which is very, very soon. I also think I'm gonna see if Samaria can get a hold of Bellatrix and maybe try to give her a call because she misses her a lot. Okay, she's calling Bellatrix. I think she was able to talk to her. I don't think they get to talk too much, especially since Bellatrix is in this dangerous position now in Strangerville, a dangerous part of her mission. So lately she hasn't been able to talk to Bellatrix much and I think she just misses her a lot. She's telling her like, we're having this luau tonight. I wish you could be here and all this stuff. I'm sure Bellatrix wishes she could be here too. And then we have Kaleo here. He's just chilling. He's so sweet. He's like the sweetest kid ever. Okay, so our kava party has started. So guests should be arriving soon. We got some people arriving here. So basically I'm having this party because I realized in the last episode after King Cayman's party, how much I missed having the parties and all the people here. This one's solely for the teenagers and the kids. It's winter everywhere else. Like it's cold in most of the other kingdoms and not in Sulani though. So I figured it'd be good and that the kids were like, our friends are like really hating the cold right now. Like, can we invite them over? Can we have a luau or kava party? And the parents were like, sure. So they have all of their friends, Samaria and Makana and Kaleo's friends. We even have here, this is Abraham Kirkland. This is who Diana has been with. So we'll get to see them here. And then this is Natalia. So that is who we saw in the last episode who was flirting with Elon. So we're gonna talk about them in a second too. So the whole thing going on with Selva Dorada, I'll let you guys know that while all the guests arrive. Um, Zamora is very angry. If you missed it, basically what happened is that Zamora had been traveling a lot. Came in, was really stressed. He missed her a lot. And then he met up with the Zara one night and one thing led to another. And yeah, and now there's a baby. Now Zamora knows about that. She is so angry. Came in is sleeping in a different room right now. Zamora has kicked him out of their room. I think Zamora knows that she needs to cool off a little bit before they really discuss anything. Zamora is a pretty rational person. I know you didn't really see that in the last episode, but she knows like, okay, 
I need to calm down before I do anything that I'm gonna regret. So she's just calming down and Cayman's basically just waiting for her to talk to him and he's like pretty scared. Oh, let's go talk to everyone, say hi to our guests. I'm actually also going to have Elon and Natalia. I'm just gonna add people to the party as I've done in the past, just so we can control them. Aramint and Han, they're gonna be here too. So we're gonna just get to see them for a little bit. They're enjoying their engagement life as we also saw in the last episode. But yeah, that's just what's going on with Cayman and Zamora. Jabari knows that he was a little bit harsh on his brother at first, he was angry, but we'll talk about them in the next episode. So I won't get too detailed in that now, but we do have Elon and Natalia Natalia here. So you guys saw Natalia and Elon in the last episode. Basically what had happened is that her mother Marie told her like, no, that's the wrong prince. Like you're flirting with the wrong prince. You guys didn't see that, but that's what happened after the whole fight thing with Azara and Zamora and Cayman. But I think Natalia told her mother, but I like Elon. Like we got to talking, he's really cute. Like he's a prince too. So what's the big deal? And her mother was like, no, if you were to marry Adric, he's the heir, he would be king, you would be queen. And so basically Natalia's here without her mother knowing Elon didn't invite her. Oh my god, they could have their first kiss already. I might have them do that. I might. We're gonna have him compliment her appearance. He's feeling flirty. I think I'm gonna have them have their first kiss. Yeah, she's here without her mom knowing, but they're hitting it off really well. And her mom's kind of still pushing her to talk to Adrian. Elon doesn't know any of this though, so we'll see what happens with that. But I just wanted to show you guys them in this episode at least. And then I have Gabriel here, so I'm gonna go have him talk with Arya, flirt with Arya. Maybe they should go stargaze together and then he'll, he'll get Arya alone. I have a corn boy and farm. Oh my God, they're so cute. They're so cute. Kimberly's just like, okay. <laughs> um, so I'll let him and Arya do their thing. And then Diana, I'm gonna have Diana go talk to Abraham because she invited Abraham here to come to the party with her. So I am going to have Diana go stargaze with Abraham. Maybe they'll have their first kiss too. We'll see, I'll see how that goes. But yeah, Elon and Natalia, they had their first kiss. So they're doing well. I don't think he's gonna quite ask her to be his girlfriend yet, but that might happen soon. Okay, and then Diana and Abraham, they are cloud gazing together. I think that she has really been able to express her more artistic side since she's been with Abraham. She really loves how much he loves art and how much he likes music too. They've been seeing each other a lot more since their date. They still haven't had their first kiss though. So maybe things will get, a oh, they're right next to uh, Arya and Gabriel too. <laughs> but maybe things will get a little bit more romantic. Let's, let's have them go flirt somewhere. Okay, yeah, they're flirting now. Oh, Diana, she's so cute. Cute. Going to compliment appear it. Oh, wait. Oh, they just had their first kiss. I didn't even tell them to do that. <gasps> okay. Abraham just kissed her and she loved it. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, she just had her first kiss. That's so cute. Maybe she would ask him to be her boyfriend now. I want her and Abraham to have like a painting date night or something like that. I think that would be very cute. Yeah, I'm gonna have her ask him to be her boyfriend. Okay, let's see. He's just like, um, yeah, of course. He likes her so much. Abraham just became the boyfriend of Princess Diana, yay! Oh my gosh, is Aisha and Kimberly, were they just fighting? It looked like they were fighting for a second. Now they look friendly. And then we have Araminta and Han here and they're super cute. Again, we'll be having their wedding on episode 50. So a few more episodes, then we'll have their wedding. And I'm so excited for it, honestly. It's going to be so, oh my God, they're so cute. He's blushing around her as always. He's so cute. And this is one of the first events that they've actually come to. So yeah. Okay, so Makan is just hanging out in his room. I'm gonna find Kimberly and try to have her go up to his room. Cause she's like, where's Makana? Okay, so Kimmy is now here. She's found Makana. I feel like she walked in and was like, what are you doing here? Her and Makana, they are both loners. They don't really love parties all that much, but I think Kimberly has gotten used to it more than Makana has. Oh my God, she's giving him a massage right now. Cause he's feeling tense. That's so cute. Like I think Kimmy knows that Makana can get stressed and that he doesn't love the parties too much. I mean, that's kind of how they met. They were both avoiding a party. That's how they really hit it off. And he's feeling very tense for sure. I think Kimberly's just trying to calm him down. Like she's had to do this before. She's kind of used to it. Now, I don't know if Makana is going to tell her about the conversation with his parents. I don't know if he, like he doesn't open up very easily. Like Kimmy's been one of the first people he's been able to open up to. And I think Kimmy knows that something's wrong too. So I think she's trying to just say like, look, if you need to talk to me about it, you can. I mean, Kimmy's a really good listener, but I think Makana just doesn't want to bring her down. Like he doesn't want to burden his problems on Kimberly. Even even though Kimberly does not mind at all. It's not a burden to her at all. They also haven't said I love you yet to each other. They've been dating for a really long time, but they haven't said it yet. But Kimberly, okay, she's putting her arm around. 
about him. They're they're feeling flirty. They're starting to feel a little bit flirty. Although Makana does still feel very, very tense, but Kimmy's feeling a little flirty. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Makana's just feeling conflicted. He's got a lot going on in his mind, and he doesn't like to burden Kimmy about this either. But okay, well, Kimmy's kissing him now, so I... <laughs> I think they're good. But yeah, everyone else seems great. Oh, well, looks like Juliet is talking to Natalia. Natalia and Juliet, they're both really sweet. So I can imagine that they would get along pretty well too. And then Kaleo and Molly Grace. We've got Kaleo's friends here. We have Alice May. We have Frederick. We have all of the friends. I think William was invited here too. So he should be here somewhere. We got to see all the teenagers, which is fun. I want to do more parties with the teens and with the adults. I'll just try to do more social events in general. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything thing we need to touch on here. So I'm going to end this episode here. But let me know what you think of everyone. Cornelius and Alice, Makai and Jessica, Ariana and Thomas, and then all the couples we got to see here. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.